Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. First of all, excellent, excellent day. Hope you're having a beautiful day. These are beautiful fragrances that I have here for you. And this is a new series that I'm coming up with and it's called All About the Flankers. So basically I'm going to show you a fragrance line that I have flankers for. And I, I never was one to, to collect a whole fragrance line. And um, I guess since I started take, re, taking up this hobby a little bit more seriously, I started to collect more and more uh, fragrance uh, flankers. I'll give you one example. So um, this particular fragrance, I only have that uh, fragrance for. And I've smelled all the other ones and I've had samples for, for all the other ones for, from the Invictus line. But... I'm, I'm, I only have one trophy, but there, there's been other fragrances. So that one was, that, that one is something I really like, but I don't have many flankers of, but, um, this particular line by, uh, D and G, I started off kind of on the fence about it. And I picked up, uh, my first bottle of D and G light blue. And this, the one that I picked up was love is love. And I picked up that bottle about last year. And I was kind of sold down the line afterwards. And um, I picked up uh, the light blue and then the, the sun. So I kind of went through the, the process of um, collecting the line. And there's one um, other friend of mine here on YouTube who, who collects fragrance lines. Um, you, you guys probably know who he is. Um, Bobby um, from H2NO. So he collects the whole entire fragrance line, um, but he more specializes in like Chanel and Dior. I, I kind of don't tend to stick to a particular house. I have about currently over maybe 300 fragrances. In the course of my life, I've had thousands of fragrances, but I never collected a whole entire house. I, it, it just wasn't... Um, it wasn't in my mind. It wasn't something that I was thinking about. But he recently uh, completed one of uh, the Dior collections for Fahrenheit, which is one of my favorite uh, all-time scents. And um, it kind of made me think I, I should have collected that line because I've been wearing Fahrenheit for a very long time, since um, the early 90s. I've been wearing Fahrenheit. And I've seen all the different fl uh, flankers come and go, and I never like really acted upon them because I was just so caught up in my uh, stubborn old school ways where I thought the original was the best. And um, to some point I was right, to be honest, but the flankers are very unique on their own. And for a collector, there's something um, very good about having a slight variation or um, something that's done a little bit differently technically for a perfume that you love. So that is kind of like the reason behind collecting flankers is because you have a little bit of that original in there, but there's slight variations to make it interesting enough for you to um, go out and purchase the, the flanker. Again, um, growing up or kind of... Uh, in the past, let's say, 20 or so years that I've been um, into fragrances, I never thought about collecting flankers. It, it just was something that didn't occur to me. And But fast forward um, <laughs> 20 years or so, and now I'm kind of in this phase where if, if there's a fragrance line that I really like or, or fragrances that I really like from the line, I'll collect uh, flankers and I have a couple of, I don't have a full collection for any one of these lines that I'm going to feature in the series, but, um, I thought they were worthy enough, um, in my opinion or different enough in my opinion to, to get, uh, flankers. So let's get into what, what I'm getting from these. So this is the original light blue and I have a small bottle of this. This is a very crisp, musky, um, very citrus 
um, scent, something that is actually very crisp, very refreshing. And what is common about everything in the light blue line is that although it's not, although they don't advertise them as containing musk, they all have a little bit of a musk or a pheromone in there. And those pheromones are, are basically kind of like a human musk. Um, I detected right away the pheromone in, in these. So they, they pretty much all contain that pheromone, except for this one. This contains a lot less of it. But that pheromone kind of um, bounces off a of skin and it makes it so that you're more approachable. So a lot of fragrances do contain pheromones, and, but they don't advertise it as such. So that, that kind of, um, quote unquote, increases your attractiveness. So that, uh, according to, I guess, studies and, and things of that nature, I, I don't really know about all that stuff, but I'm just kind of giving you an, uh, a generalization of what I think those, um, those musk pheromones do. So they all kind of contain a little bit of that musky pheromone although it may not be listed in the note breakdown. So this is the light blue, this is the original. There's another one, Intense, which is supposed to be uh, one of the best ones from the line. I don't currently own that. Um, I picked this one up for, uh, it's a small one. I picked it up, um, they had a sale, and I picked it up on a sale. But usually those kind of go for a little bit pricier. And even if you see them in your um, rack stores, the the light blue line is a little bit pricier. I haven't seen the light blue Intense in the rack stores. Normally I see from DNG, the Intenso, the, the DNG Porom, and some of the other flankers, which we're looking at now. Um, the next one that I purchased, I'm gonna skip over the sun because the sun was the most recent purchase, was the Love is Love. And I really enjoy this. Um, the presentation, as you can see for all of them, is pretty much that same DNG style bottle. And this is an iconic bottle. I really like it. And what I really love about the, the bigger bottle, as you can see, these are incrementally a little bit bigger. They're incrementing in size. This is a, a really big bottle, but if you, if you look at it, I guess, um, aesthetically, it doesn't look that much bigger than, than the other ones. This is a 4.2. This is, um, what is this? This is a 2.5, and then this one is a 1.7. So the 4.2 doesn't look much bigger than the uh, 2.5, and this is double the size. I just kind of like that that stubby um, look to it that it's, this is a huge bottle, but it doesn't look that way. What I really like about this one is its freshness. So out of the three, I believe this one is the, the most fresh and also the most sweet. So I'm gonna spray it on my other hand. Let's see what, if I'm right about this. Yeah. And it's the less, it, it, it doesn't contain as much musk as the other ones. Definitely get that sweetness um, of, of vanilla undertone I really like that. So that this one is is the one that actually started my um, my love affair with the the light blue line. And then uh, last but not least, this is the last one that I added to the collection. This is Sun. And this one is very vibrant. So out of the three, this one is probably the most vibrant. And and the name is kind of named accordingly. The sun kind of shines. So this one is very vibrant. I like it, but there are similarities from the light blue um, sun and the uh, love is love as far as it has a little bit of a, of a sweetness to it as well but this one is much, much uh, sweeter. So again, 
these are the, the flankers that I have for, for this particular line. Um, I'm really enjoying this line, by the way, from Dolce & Gabbana. And um, it's interesting. I, I never thought I would collect some of these uh, flankers. Like this was honestly not even on my radar uh, until about a year ago. I wasn't thinking to, to collect this, but uh, I decided to give it a try and I really like the, the light blue. And I'm not really a, uh, a big freshy um, fan. I do like some of them, but this one kind of knocked it out the park for me. All right, people, take care of yourselves. Peace and blessings. Tell me what you think about the light blue line and if you have any of its flankers. I'll talk to you soon. I'm out later.